Hey everyone, this is a quick rundown of the Mid Journey updates from April, and boy do we have a lot to cover. First, I can finally say it, V7 has been released. You can access V7 by including it dash dash V7 in your prompts or set it as the default model in your settings. V7 launched as an alpha model with near weekly updates being released before they set it as the default model in a few weeks from now. I shared my first impressions in this video, so I won't go into too much detail here, but V7 comes with better image quality and detail on average compared to V6. I'm getting some really beautiful images with V7, especially with realism and photorealism. Skin textures are more natural, there's less beauty bias compared to V6.1, and the default style aesthetics seem less grungy. The more I use V7, the more I like it better than the V6 models. Body coherence is a little better, but not as big of a jump as I expected. You'll still get some distorted limbs and faces, but less frequently. Your V6 SREF codes and mood boards can be used with V7, but results can be inconsistent. Some SREF codes look great in V7, while others just look a bit off. Body coherence, SREF, and mood board compatibility are all expected to improve with the upcoming updates. V7 handles longer prompts better and shows improved prompt understanding and adherence in many scenarios. Though you might need to adjust your prompting style, which is normal for any major new model release, but I know it can be frustrating at times. Midjourney is constantly balancing prompt adherence and aesthetics. For detailed prompting tips in V7, be sure to check out my last video where I cover prompt structure, adherence examples, SREF techniques, draft mode, and more. Before using V7, you'll need to set up your V7 global personalization profile. To do this, go to the personalize page and rank at least 200 image pairs. Try not to overthink the ranking process, and if you've never used personalization before, I'll leave some resources below. Personalization tailors mid-journey to your visual aesthetic preferences. You can always toggle it off, but I encourage you to create images with and without your personalization and then decide which results you like better. And if you're curious what happens when you skip or don't skip image pairs during the ranking process, check out the experiments that I did in this video. Features recently enabled for V7 include the weird no and tile parameters plus remix mode. I just updated my free parameter guide with notes on V7. I'll leave a link to that down below. A new aesthetics update was pushed to improve image quality, prompt accuracy, hand and body coherence. And there is a new experimental parameter dash dash EXP, which sort of acts like another axis of the stylize knob. The announcement says that you can use it to get more dynamic and creative images, but you will lose prompt adherence and diversity. It's not clear whether this will develop into a long lasting parameter, hence the name, but it's something new to play with. Then we have some near future updates. The Omni reference should be out any moment now, maybe even right as I post this video. The Omni reference or OREF is sort of a new and improved version of character reference that works with the V7 model. It will support objects, logos, human and non-human characters, and more. It's supposed to work equally as well with both mid-journey and non-mid-journey created images, so if you want to create selfies, that should work better. There will be a weight parameter to give us some control over how similar the result is to the input reference image. Support for multiple characters will come in a future update. Character reference will still be available for V6, that's not going away, but V7 will use Omni reference instead. The quality parameter is expected to come to V7 soon, offering a slower mode that produces higher quality images. More aesthetics updates are coming to improve SREF and mood board results. Fast mode will be enabled for V7 soon. Right now, V7 only runs in relax and turbo modes. If you have fast mode enabled and run a V7 job, it's actually using turbo mode, so be careful with those fast hours. Some features like multi-prompting likely won't make it to V7 due to some issues which are also affecting the no parameter in V7. The no parameter is available, but the results can be a bit unpredictable. There was a chance that the new upscalers would get pushed to the V8 timeline, but upscaler work has resumed, so we may see that coming soon as well. Once the rest of the aesthetic improvements and the upscaler arrive, the team appears to be shifting focus towards V8 development and video release rather than adding more features to V7. Editor features like retexture and inpainting aren't expected to be updated for V7. You can still use the editor with your V7 images, but the algorithms behind those specific features haven't received updates yet. Next, let's talk through several website interface changes. First, the personalized page has a new look. Profiles and mood boards are split into different sections and in a grid view format. 
The order seems a bit random and unfortunately you can't rearrange them at the moment. In the upper right, you can filter by model to see which profiles can be used for that model. If V7 is selected, you'll see all of your mood boards by default, plus any of your V7 personalization profiles that you've created. V6 personalization profiles can be used with V7, but to see them here, you need to click show V6 profiles. V7 profiles, however, cannot be used with the V6 models. Mood boards can be used with both V6 and V7. Over on the create page, the imagine bar has also been updated. In the settings menu, you can select V7 as your default model. Personalization has been moved out of settings and has its own dedicated button where you can toggle it on or off. Click the down arrow to select which personalization profiles or mood boards are used when personalization is activated. What shows up here will depend on which model you have selected in your settings. We also have a major new feature exclusive to V7 called draft mode. Draft mode renders images super fast for half the cost of a standard job. The trade-off is that the images are lower quality, but it's great for quickly iterating on ideas. To activate it, click the lightning bolt. You can type your prompt directly and it will run it in draft mode as is, or you can click the chat bubbles to activate conversational mode. Conversational mode is now available for both standard and draft jobs. However, I generally don't recommend using it in standard mode because it's most useful when paired with draft mode speed. Once you're in conversational mode, you are interacting with Midjourney's LLM, which will choose a prompt for you based on your instructions. You can activate your microphone if you prefer to speak instead of type. It understands multiple languages. You can set a verbal command trigger to control when a new image generation job runs. And what's really cool is that conversational mode has memory within your session. It can look at your previous jobs and make variations to specific images or prompts. There are a lot of fun ways to use draft mode from character and scene development to running multiple jobs at once. Once you have an image that you like, click its enhance button to generate a high quality version in Midjourney standard mode, where you can upscale or continue editing from there. For more examples on what you can do with draft mode, be sure to check out my previous two videos on V7. Another major change is with the image editor. Midjourney has combined their basic and full editors into a single interface that's now available to all subscription tiers. If you previously only had access to the basic editor, you now have access to features like retexture and the ability to upload and edit external images. You can send any Midjourney image to the editor by opening it and clicking editor. The edit tab lets you zoom out, change aspect ratio, and repaint or erase areas of your image. The smart selection tools were added in March and covered in my previous monthly roundup video. Layers is the newest feature added to the editor. You can upload or paste image URLs to add multiple images as layers. Maybe you wanna place a character into a specific background. I'll be honest, I don't see myself using this feature very often since matching lighting and perspective between different images can be challenging. If you are using layers as part of your workflow, please comment down below so I can better understand where using layers is valuable. Then we have the retexture tab. Retexture lets you change the style of an image while keeping the core structure intact. It's great for applying SREF codes to illustrations and drawings, for example. For a deep dive into the editor, check out my full editor video from last year. Most of the features that are in the current editor are covered in that video. The only ones not covered are the smart selection tool, which I talked about last month, and the new layers feature. The editor is still a bit clunky and a little buggy at times, but Midjourney is planning to push out some updates to it soon. Once it stabilizes a bit more, I'll make a new in-depth video on the editor. And if you have any other questions about the editor, please comment down below. In other news, Midjourney is making progress on their video model. The first training runs were completing at the end of April, and they've said the initial outputs look promising. Next, the model will go through several weeks of optimization, and if we're lucky, we might get a first look at it in May or June. Midjourney's goal is to make video accessible and affordable for all subscription plans. They're working to strike a balance between cost and quality, but also want that Midjourney magic layered on top. As for 3D development, they'll resume work on this after V7 leaves its alpha state and becomes the default model. Their initial goal for 3D is to let users move the camera around to reframe images from different angles. So that's it for the April Roundup. To learn more about V7, be sure to watch my previous two videos. More will be coming soon. There's also extra V7 related content over on Patreon, along with my monthly prompt collections and mid-journey guides. 
I'm really grateful for all of my Patreon members. It's one of the best ways to support this channel. If you found this update helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, all the things. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.